Holy frickin' crap, fellas and ladies. We have a ton of news to get through today, and a lot of it is freaking incredible. So let's go ahead and roll. First up, I'm going to go through the console and gaming news, and then it's on to PC hardware. Warning, brace yourselves. A lot of this stuff just might blow you away. All right. The Xbox One S is the first thing on the agenda here today, and it's officially launching, as you guys know, in August. We already know this little white box will come packing an HD Blu-ray player. We'll be able to output 4K with HDR over either DisplayPort or the HDMI 2.0 interface. What we didn't know, and that I was trying to allude to previously, is that the GPU in Microsoft's new little box is going to be different than what we currently have in the Xbox One. Now, we still don't know exactly what that's going to be, but we do know that every single Xbox One game, according to Mikey Barra, uh, head engineer at Microsoft for the Xbox team, every single Xbox One game will be upscaled to 4K resolution. Now, we don't have any direct footage of this, but you can bet it will certainly not make the current catalog of games look any worse, and honestly, it should look pretty frickin' sweet. Console upscalers have always done a pretty good job, in my opinion, of kind of hiding native resolution, and I see no reason why this should be any different. A lot of the aliasing associated with lower resolution, etc., should be dealt with pretty well, being upscaled to 4K, and I imagine the HDR will look pretty frickin' sweet. So that's pretty exciting stuff. That console is coming out again in August, starting at $299 for an HD Blu-ray player, and a console that plays all those games at an upscaled 4K. Sounds pretty sweet to me. Next up is the release date and requirements for Microsoft's recently announced Play Anywhere feature. This will of course allow future games to deliver cross-platform play, unified game saves, and a single purchase for a ton of upcoming Xbox and PC titles coming down the line such as Gears of War 4, Halo 6, the Forza Racing series which is amazing, and basically every new Xbox, Microsoft first party game, and a lot of third party games to follow. If you have your devices on auto update, you will of course receive both of these updates without having to do anything, which is always nice. Um, but both of those updates, again the summer update for the Xbox One and the Windows 10 anniversary update will be required for these features to work. And lastly, on the gaming side, the Xbox One Ultimate Game Sale is back, and there are some smoking deals to be had. Starting today and finishing up on July the 11th, you can pick up titles such as Doom, Dark Souls 3, Quantum Break for 25% off, with titles like Fallout 4 going for half off or 30 bucks, and other newer games just for rock bottom pricing. I mean, I know people aren't really playing a lot of Evolved, but for $13 or $16 for Far Cry 4, I don't see why the hell not. Um, you know, if you have Batman Arkham Knight on the PC like me and think or know that it's still complete shite, uh, pick it up on the Xbox One for 15 bucks here and the game runs and looks great. And remember, all of these games will still run great and they'll look better and better as you move up the Xbox ecosystem in terms of hardware with an Xbox One S getting those games to 4K upscaled for you, or the Xbox One Scorpio with six teraflops, rendering those games at high resolutions, when those devices become available, should be awesome. Now, holy freaking crap, is there some amazing PC news or what? First off, I just wanna say loud and clear that do not buy a GTX 1080 right now for $1,000. Please don't do it to yourself. I know it's always tempting to go out for you and for me to, to get the very best PC hardware that we can afford all the time, but new information has just been released that will supposedly see the successor to NVIDIA's top-end consumer GPU coming out in just a month. It's going to be a GP100, possibly a GP102 based next generation GTX Titan, again launching sometime in August. This thing will supposedly bring 50% more power than the current top dog, the GTX 1080, and I fully expect retail prices to be right around NVIDIA's usual car selling, wife leaving, asking price of just under $1,000 US. So if you can hold off uh, on purchasing one of those GTX 1080s right now, I certainly would and you should be highly rewarded uh, come next month. This card is expected to be 
a 250 watt part, this baby will be hungry for power and ready to deliver much of the same to your eyeballs and your screen. Rumored to be coming in two flavors, which seems to be popular right now. We're looking at either 12 or 16 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory or HBM2, which would be absolutely doorbusters and honestly would just shred any possible game or scenario I can even think of at maximum whateverness, settings of insanity. Aside from the Titan, as you all know, the GTX 1060 is due out here in just about a week, and it looks like unofficial benchmarks have already leaked and have this card eking out a narrow victory against rival AMD's card, the newly released RX 480. With this card rumored to be priced somewhere around 250 bucks, could we see AMD potentially drop the prices of the 8GB card down to 229 Or is that $10 differentiator there enough to justify the difference in performance? With some games going in AMD's favor, obviously, like Hitman and uh, DX12 titles, and certain games going in NVIDIA's favor, it's going to be interesting to see how they price those two cards, but either way, we're going to have a little fight there in the middle of the market, so that should be sweet. I do think it's likely though that whatever happens, the RX 480 add-in board partner cards will remain around 250 as they'll likely clock much better and exceed the GTX 1060's reference card and performance. But then we'll have, of course, the 1060's partner cards coming in a few weeks later, and those should go even higher into the performance and cost brackets. But it certainly does look like this middle area of enthusiast GPU products is flushing out very, very nicely in this next generation of lower cost, higher performing GPUs from both NVIDIA and AMD, which is just awesome for everybody. Now, there is a couple of positive things and negative things to note about the GTX 1060, and that is that while these cards do retain a DVI output on their reference board, I'm looking at you AMD, they do not support SLI at all, which is a massive bummer uh, for those folks who may prefer NVIDIA but want to get a great deal on a GTX 1080 type performance. It looks like they'll either be forced to go with Team Red at this point or pony up for the GTX 1070, which is pretty much twice as much money but only delivers around 50% more performance. And the 1080s are just so expensive right now. And again, with a Titan pending, it just doesn't seem like a good idea to go ahead and drop that G on the 1080 at this time. But still, for budget-minded folks that want to do a single GPU, the 1060 will be a very, very valid option here in just about a week. Of course, AMD has marked a recent milestone in their own higher-end GPU with Vega, and it will be interesting to see who can get these big boys, these big performing GPUs, out into the market uh, more quickly. And I don't think it's going to be AMD. They seem to be a little bit behind just on R&D right now with Vega. So it looks like the Titan will reign supreme at the top end for quite a while. And of course, I'm not sure when NVIDIA will be able to roll out their lower end cards to compete with AMD in the lower end market. So we may have kind of a separation there where the RX 480 and the GTX 1060 kind of butt heads in the middle. But other than that, it looks like AMD will retain the bottom half of the food chain and NVIDIA will retain the top half at least for the time being. Now also coming out of AMD is of course their next generation Zen-based CPUs. Now you guys have seen previous footage on my channel of their top-end consumer chips dubbed Summit Ridge running Doom and we know that these will be enthusiast grade consumer level CPUs with 8 cores and 16 threads and they'll be the first Zen cores to launch sometime later this year while we also knew AMD would be bringing their Zen party to servers and APUs, we really didn't know in what capacity. Well, leaking out today, an apparently reliable source uh, has a picture and a shipping manifest for the upcoming server-ended part codenamed Naples. These chips will come out starting in 32 core and 64 thread flavors and up. These chips are supposedly in the hand of various testing facilities and are fully operational already, meaning we shouldn't have to wait long to see these babies on store shelves, which is super exciting. Now, aside from the exciting super, super high-end chips, that are just no doubt amazing, but I certainly can't afford, is AMD's next generation APUs, codenamed Zeppelin, 
these babies allegedly will not only include 32 Zen cores and 64 threads, which honestly could be a misprint from my from my sources here, but I'll link them in the description, so check these out. But um, they're supposed to also include a Vega-based GPU on the same die, assumedly. So that is insane. I mean, the connection between the GPU and the CPU will be even faster than PCIe, of course, because they're sitting on the same die, literally side by side, which will maximize performance on the same chip it will just be bonkers. But for those folks, system builders and whomever that just want to build an easy PC, toss one single chip in the CPU socket and call it a day and have amazing performance in terms of CPU calculations with really good IPC throughput and outstanding multi-core performance with 16 or 32 threads or eight cores or whatever these numbers are, they're going to be able to run highly parallelized tasks very well. You know, they're gonna have a lot of cores and a lot of threads with great IPC again per core. Um, you know, pair that with an on-chip Vega-based GPU should be absolutely outstanding and is likely, in my opinion, to appear in the next generation Xbox codename Scorpio. So we'll see how that works out, but write that down in your Josh's possibly right notes. Anyway, guys, a lot of chaos going around right now, but yeah, the GTX 1060 is due out in just about a week. And partner cards of the RX 480 look really awesome. Uh, of course, pending the release of the RX 470 and RX 460, it is no doubt an exciting time here for gamers content creation people and just everybody should be benefiting in one way or another in terms of value and performance from all this awesome tech coming down the pipeline and I am super stoked for this stuff and will of course have more information on all of these parts and products as more becomes available but until then guys have a great friggin night uh, enjoy the gift of life and take it easy peace out